Well, hello, my friends. It's time for a five-minute chess game against a beautiful mind from Switzerland. Looks like we're going to have some type of uh, Bogo Indian here. Although he played a funny move order. So I can't remember what to do with this move order. It was... What's happening? <laughs> uh, I don't know what to do. Well, this is interesting. I mean, it's just a totally different order, order of moves, and I'm just having trouble dealing with dealing with it. Um, this is a weird solution. Oh, what if he just goes knight f3? What's, what is my big plan? Maybe b6. But I don't know what the hell I'm doing, man. Um, I'm just gonna play some, make something up. I don't know. I'll go bishop f8 now, e3. He never goes a3 like a jerk, so he just leaves my bishop here. It's kind of annoying. I don't know how this guy tricked me. Maybe after knight d2 in this position, I'm supposed to do something else. I just didn't quite figure out what it was. Because usually they don't go g3 and move 3 combined with knight to d2. We'll swing that bishop back. Now I can play e5, but now I'm going to go d6, man. Let's just go for e5. He can play e5 himself, but I'm, somehow I'm not concerned. I think I can just go immediate knight d7, and I like my position. I like my position just fine. So should I play the typical plan? Probably. Knight to b8 is the typical plan. Bishop g4 is a kind of typical move. Lighten, loosen up his, um, his king side after he goes f3. Uh, yeah, after this is like a typical kind of um, Bogo Indian position, except totally different move order than usual. So I'm not exactly sure what it means. Probably I should take this, and if, if B takes, even B5 is, is annoying, or or Bishop F5. I don't I don't know which one exactly. Well now. Now I have a lot of possibilities. I think this one's the simplest one. Idea of knight c5, of course. And I'm going to get this really good square. Oh, no, he can go... If he goes knight c4, I go a4. And so I'm going to get, like, a good square for my knight on c5, which is the dream in this position. That's... It looks very risky. All right, I'm going to do this. Oh, a little risky to me. This feels like my position is, is very comfortable now. This is the idea why it's important to know themes in an opening, though, because this is not theory, but I know just the general ideas of playing c6, of trying to control c5 square, and I can apply them in a completely different move order. Also ideas of bishop g4 and then back enticing f3, because you never know when queen b6 check will be strong. So he wants to go knight to uh, b6. The question is, do I care? I think I'm going to do this, because if knight to b6, now rook to c3 looks very annoying. Um, yeah, I, I could also go on knight to d7, like a safety move. I might do that next. I might do it. Hard to say. But I like safety, so probably I'll do it. Let's see, let's see he goes rook f to c1. I could just go knight to b7. I could also take him b3. I mean, it's also it's also very strong. He has some big problems here. Mm, muchos problemas. Mi amigo tiene muchos problemas aquí. ¿Por qué? Oh, un momento. Um, 
if I go pawn takes pawn, what does he do exactly? I'm just gonna take it, man. Because if knight a5, rook c2, you know, like, looks very unpleasant to me. <laughs> yeah, he has to defend his, his knight on d3. It's not, not so easy to do. He found a way. But it wasn't easy, right? Now, can I crush this dude? Is the big question. Rook c3 looks very strong. That's a horrible move. I just totally missed, um, I just totally missed that. It was, I mean, horror was a stretch, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't good. Just put it that way. It's not a good move. Well, queen c3, maybe. Queen c7, sorry. It takes my bishop. Greg, you're sleepy. Chill the hell out, alright? Don't play so bad. Focus. Focus. You screwed up. Now it's time to just sit back and you know redeem yourself. All right, trade everything. This is not not great for me because now he has develop my bishop on f8. Like development edges are oh well, he's gaining the c5 square. So now we're happy again, I think. Um, I'm just gonna play a kind of safety move. Where does he want to go with that? I don't. I see. Yeah, I'm gonna do this and bring it to c7. Looks good on c7. All right, loosen him up over here. Um, take and then bishop e7 to g5 looks strong. Probably I have some tricks coming soon also. I don't know, I see trick ideas. Let's just do this. I assume that f4 is horrible. He, I guess, doesn't assume the same thing as me. Um, this has to be horrible. Right. Really? He's playing like these moves like they're not really bad for him. Surprising. Uh, I just do this, I guess. I'm threatening to take on e4. He's got to watch out for queen e8 check type moves. He's going to blunder something soon. I mean, it has to be horrible for him. His position is just his king in the middle like this. Knight on b6 looks pretty, but... I just assume this is good. I'll just do it. I cannot imagine a world in which this isn't strong. But you know it's hard. I actually don't see a follow-up in this one one key position, which sort of bothers me. Um, I'll find something, I'm sure. So he has no threats. So I could actually play quiet moves. He has no threats. So like rook c three, for example. I could play queen g four. I could just do this, you know. Let's see what he's going to do about things <laughs> when I just walk into his position. No rush, no need to check him. Checks are easy. He knows what to do when I check him. He knows to move the king, because there's nothing else to do. Rook c1, he had king d1. I didn't see a follow-up. But now, I'm creeping into his position. And it's like he has to figure out what even is my threat. And he's spending all of his time. This is like a good blitz move, you know? He's spending literally all of his time in this move. I think it's a good move also, but these are the kind of moves that are strong. You know, you resist the, the forcing moves and you just kind of play he's lagging or something. But, I mean, I think he's losing, so. Right, he, just, he forfeited on time. Uh, I, I think you're going to see he's just lost here. If you turn on Houdini, yeah, it's just minus 10. So I'm just checkmating him. Yeah, it's even the strongest move. Way to go, me. Rook c3 wins two, rook c2 wins two, so everything wins here. But yeah, overall a decent game. I, I made I made a mistake with um like somewhere around here I made a mistake. Oh rook c3 was a mistake, I guess. What should I do instead though? I don't know. 
Because this, I, I bet Houdini's gonna find something good. Knight c5. Yeah, I didn't know if it was good or not. I thought maybe. Oh, because the knight's pinned. Hmm. So knight takes, I take on f1. For some reason, I didn't, I didn't catch that. But I always, I thought I could still do this, and it might, might get annoying. I just want to see what the deal is here. Oh, and it's check, discovered check. All right. Notice, by the way, the key. That bishop to g4 move, very important in such positions. To weaken this king by making them go f3, you never know when this check is going to come in handy. Uh, all these ideas are just um, typical Bogo Indian ideas. And I was able to use them all. He got lucky that somehow I screwed up. But in the end, fortunately, was able to pull out the win anyway. So thanks, guys, for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow with another 5-minute game. Bye-bye.